The Travis Walton UFO incident was an alleged alien abduction of American forestry worker Travis Walton by a UFO on November 5, 1975, while he was working in the Apache Sitgreaves National Forests near Snowflake, Arizona. Walton was missing for five days and six hours. After days of searching with scent dogs and helicopters, Walton says he reappeared by the side of a road near Eber, Arizona. The Walton case received mainstream publicity and remains one of the best-known alien abduction stories, while scientific skeptics consider it a hoax. Welcome to Better Than Roswell. This work is controversial and still disputed by many scientists. But if Brady and Persinger are right, it might explain the sort of thing that is alleged to have happened in this northern Arizona forest. It was near dusk on November 5, 1975. A truckload of forestry workers were making their way home when they saw something strange to one side of the road. They stopped. And one of them, Travis Walton, got out to take a closer look. As he got nearer, something happened that made his companions panic. It was hovering up here, uh, just below the tops of the trees, and it was about uh, 20, 25 feet in diameter. What he saw was a bright object hovering in midair. When I got up uh, about here, I crouched down behind a log, and I could hear a sound coming from it. It was kind of a, a very strange mechanical sound. And I was kind of uh, wrestling with the idea of being so close to this. I'd expected it to take off, you know, and I'd run, in running up here, I, I figured this was my last chance to, you know, to see this thing up close. But uh, I decided uh, I'd better get the hell out of there. And as I raised up, and turned to go, I felt this numbing shock and blacked out. Um, the guys in the truck said they saw this brilliant beam come out of the bottom of the craft and hit me in the head and the chest and knocked me flying through the air. When his companions returned to the scene, they found no sign of Travis. He maintains that he blacked out and came to inside a strange room. I, I didn't regain consciousness very quickly. I was uh, very groggy and in a lot of pain. But when I could finally focus my eyes, I saw these creatures standing over me, which just flipped me out immediately. I was pretty hysterical. I was screaming all kinds of things out, and they, and they started towards me. And I, and I grabbed a thing off of the table there and uh, lashed out at them, and they stopped. They just kind of put their hands out like that at me. And then they just turned around and left the room. And uh, I was afraid they'd come back. So uh, I was going to try to find a way out of there. Uh, I guess I kind of assumed I was still, you know, or that the craft was still in, in, here in the woods. But um, I went looking for a way out. I, w I went into another room. And I was, uh, as I was looking for a way out, an another being came in. And this was a very human-appearing person. He led me out of this craft, which appeared to be parked inside of a, a larger building or, or a larger craft. He just took me right out of there, down a hallway to a room where there were some other people who looked like him. They put this mask over my face. It was, it was kind of like an oxygen mask thing. There was no hose connected to it. They put it over my face, and that was the last thing I knew. I just blacked out. Travis Walton says that the incident ended four days later when he found himself lying at the side of a road not far away. One explanation for what happened may lie in the working of the human brain, according to Dr. Persinger. Now the area we're interested in is right through here, right below this particular fissure. And this is called the temporal lobe. And to appreciate the structures we're really interested in, we'd have to cut the brain this way, transversely or coronally. Now, this particular part of the brain 
is one of the most electrically unstable regions throughout the entire area. If one stimulates this region right here, which is the hippocampal region, and including the amygdaloid area, one can get all types of experiences, such as the release of dream-like experiences into the waking state, a modification of memory, even partial amnesia, and a confabulation, that is, the filling in of that amnesia or that blank space with fantasy. And that fantasy is a function of what the person believes or has been taught or has experienced. One of the most interesting aspects of stimulating this part of the brain is the meaningfulness of it. Well, there's a cosmic experience type of effect by stimulating this part of the brain. In fact, it is very similar to a type of religious experience. Dr. Persinger feels that what happened at Fatima in Portugal in the early years of this century can be explained in this way. Several thousands of people saw a luminous display. They thought it was the sun because they had no other word for it. They called it the sun, but it was below the clouds. Right? Estimated 30,000 people saw that event. Those that were closest to it had the richest imagery and experience. Those that were far away only saw the ball of light. Those that were very close and of one religious persuasion saw Joseph or whatever. Those that were of another religious persuasion thought they saw Christ. The camera only saw a ball of light. Persinger believes that a similar luminous display had an effect on Travis Walton. The Travis Walton case supports the model extraordinarily well. He is basically a almost six foot conductor, semiconductor that walked very close to the tremendous luminous display, tremendous potential there. The discharge occurred between him and uh, the part of his body that was closest to the ball, which was his head and his chest. The ensuing events seemed to indicate a case of partial amnesia and of consequent confabulation. In other words, the amnesia of those three or four days were filled in with fantasy. But the point is, since the part of the brain that is involved with memory and experience was modified by this severe shock, he would not necessarily be lying. He may actually believe that that's what happened to him. Others wanted to be sure. The National Enquirer has long had an interest in UFOs and in selling newspapers. They asked Walton to take a lie detector test and called in the services of Jack McCarthy. I received a call at my home asking me to come to the uh, Sheraton Hotel in Scottsdale and not to tell anybody where I was going, period. Well, naturally, I told my wife and uh, picked up my portable equipment and left for the hotel. A lie detector is used to reveal whether a person is telling the truth by measuring pulse rate, respiration, and blood pressure. Some experts, however, doubt its reliability. But after two hours of questioning and recording the reactions, McCarthy thought he had the answer. When I completed my examinations after reading my charts, I rendered the opinion to the reporters from the National Enquirer that uh, the charts were deceptive. And in my opinion, he was uh, attempting to perpetrate a UFO hoax. Well, the lid blew off the room. Uh, I thought his brother Duane was going to throw me off the balcony. He was raging like a bull, saying there's no way that his brother would lie. <coughs> and his charts were very, very clear, obviously deceptive. And. Uh, Prior to the examination, the reporters from the National Enquirer, I forgot to mention this, asked me if I would have any objection uh, ahead of time to having pictures taken of my charts, the equipment, and myself following the examination. I said, no, no problem. Well, after I rendered my opinion, uh, the pictures uh, were completely forgotten. They had no more interest in pictures. But what they did do, they went into an adjoining room and drew up a little uh, form for me to sign, asked me to sign them. 
uh, to the effect that I wouldn't reveal where I had been that day, that I would say nothing about this examination, and so forth and so on. Travis Walton argues that he failed the test because he was excessively nervous as a result of his recent close encounter with aliens. Despite his claim of being overly nervous, his reactions on the chart uh, are in self a disclaimer to that contention. He was not overly nervous. His reactions were normal. They were very deceptive. And in my opinion, uh, he is, was lying and did not take any UFO trip. So McCarthy felt the entire experience was a hoax. Travis Walton was given another test sometime later, which he did pass although the procedure used has been criticized. Despite the controversy, the National Enquirer gave the forestry workers the UFO Encounter of the Year Award, with checks amounting to a total of $5,000. I don't know about you, but this is easy to put away as a hoax, or is it? The first thing I have noticed is when the polygraph results is given, they sure do pause for a moment before saying Travis Walton lied, I am no human body expert reader, but normally when people pause to tell you something, they rethink their answer, and yes Travis was at the moment a bit financially unstable, but did he do it for the cash? Or was he actually paid a by higher people? To make it all sound simple and like a hoax so that we won't think much about it, the CIA is known for giving misinformation to lead us astray, and is it actually really Travis that came back? This one is a bit hard to debunk as there is too many things that point it as a hoax and mislead us as well, comment what is your thoughts on this? Thanks for watching, I am your host Exploration X and if you enjoy these podcasts please consider subscribing and hit that like so that we also know you enjoy it.